Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can cross compile our UE4 projects with Linux so that we can upload them to our AWS fleets. Um, we can upload our AWS builds through a Linux server instead of a Windows server and save um, some money on our fleets uh, monthly. So, um, and I'm going to show you right here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so we have this Linux spot of an M4.xl and it's going to be $16.90 per month. Um, under Linux spot pricing and then if we come down here to Windows spot pricing and go to an m4.xl it's going to be 97.23 per month so you can see there's going to be big savings if we're using Linux uh, let's take a look at on demand we're going to have an m4.xl which is going to be about 90.15 per month on a Linux on demand compared to a Windows on demand where it's going to be closer to 170.82 per month so it's a good habit to go ahead and start cross-compiling your projects with Linux so that we can save money because as your player count increases, you're going to want to find any way to save money. I've shown you guys some ways we can use spot, spot instances instead of um, on-demand so that we save money that way, but now we're going to take a look at um, using Linux uh, uploads instead of Windows to save money in that sense. Okay, so to go ahead and get started is we're going to need to make a few downloads. So let's come over to, just go ahead and search up like VirtualBox download, and then we're going to come to these window hosts and you're going to want to download that virtual box right there. Um, our next step we're going to need to do is come to Fedora and we're going to find this Windows and we're going to make that download right there as well and then we're going to come over to cross compiling for Linux and if you just search cross compile UE4 um, you should get this link and then you're going to find your UE4 version for your game for your source build and you're going to download the Clang to go along with it. All right, and now that we've got all those downloaded, let's go ahead and come, on, come over to our downloads on our computer, and let's go ahead and, in, make, and install Clang first. So go ahead, double-click that and install it. I've already done it, but once you do install it, you should be able to go to your PC, and you'll see this Unreal Tool Chains, and with this vClang inside of it. And so as long as you have that, you should be able to come over here, and let's go to System variables to edit the system environment variables go to environment variables and then inside of system variables you're going to need to create a new but you're going to create so we're going to create a new and the variable name is going to be this Linux underscore multi arch root and the variable value is going to be this uh, the location of your clang so this um, uh, this directory right there and that'll give us access to be into our cross compiler so we can cross compile with Unreal Engine. Alright our next step is going to be to get this virtual box installed and um, I've already done it but basically for the installation you're just going to keep everything default. Um, I'll go ahead and link a video in the description in case you get confused uh, for downloading this virtual box but it should be very simple. Um, once it is installed to your engine you should get this screen uh, pulled up once you pull up your VirtualBox manager and uh, once you get to this screen we'll be good to go on to the next step. Alright so now that we got our Oracle VirtualBox manager pulled up um, you're most likely just gonna have this tools on yours you're not gonna have this Fedora right here and that's what we're gonna need to create so let's go ahead and come over here and go new and we're gonna give it a name I'm gonna name mine Fedora like I did there and then you're gonna probably want to keep this machine folder since I already have mine created I'm gonna have to use a default uh, a different folder because that one's already used so uh, let's just create a new folder test Fedora select folder but you can use that virtual um, box VMs Linux Fedora 64-bit go ahead and go next I'm gonna give mine 4096 megabytes next create a virtual hard disk now uh, VDI virtual di disk image that's good and then dynamically allocated good and then I'm gonna give mine 16 gigabytes uh, I would recommend you do the same and then you can go ahead and create and I've already created mine like I said so I'm just gonna cancel out this is mine right here but that is how I created that so now we are all set up with our fedora okay now before we go any farther uh, one thing that I uh, messed up earlier in the video is we're gonna wanna make, download the this fedora um, the x86 64 DVD ISO um, 
workstation live not this windows file over here download this uh, when when we're on fedora installation and so now now that we got that fixed and we got the right file downloaded uh, inside of this fedora that we created let's go to settings and if we come over here to storage under your controller this should say empty I've already added mine but you're gonna come over here choose a disk file and we're gonna choose that fedora workstation live that you just downloaded and you're gonna put that in there and then after that click OK and uh, come up here to tools and under network we're gonna create and this is gonna allow us to have a virtual box host only Ethernet adapter which is gonna allow us to come back over to our Fedora and we're gonna uh, come down to network and under this adapter too we're gonna have a host only adapter with that virtual box host host only Ethernet adapter and now with all that set up we're good to go ahead and press start and uh, the first time that you're gonna start this you're gonna get hit with some questions it's gonna make you set up a personal account which you'll see that I'm gonna log into but it's gonna ask for things like your language a username a password um, also I think before you get started it's gonna make sure make sure you select this Fedora workstation um, when you're getting started there's also going to be some installations and configurations we need to do as well you're going to want to select your AT, ATA VVOX hard disk when it asks how you want to configure and then um, from there you can begin the configuration that's going to take a while um, when you first boot it up there's going to be some installations to do and that might take a little bit of time but uh, eventually we'll get through it and you'll get on to your next step and so then after that uh, configuration completes if um, inside of this uh, virtual box that we have running if it doesn't pull up a screen that says welcome right here after about 15 to 20 seconds just go ahead and power it off and um, we're gonna make a quick change so go ahead power it off and um, we're gonna come back uh, over to here back inside of our virtual box manager and we're going to go to our settings and inside of the storage under the controller IDE you're going to just want to remove disk from virtual drive um, and then go ahead and start it back up and you should get a welcome screen um, when it goes this time and then once you have that account set up uh, in the future when you uh, press start um, on your on this Fedora uh, virtual box uh, w w it'll just bring up your your account and you'll just be able to log into that account and now we have our fedora running and we're gonna be inside of that and so now the next thing it's gonna go ahead and ask us to do is if we want to run these uh, run this software we're gonna click run and then we're gonna put in the password associated with our account uh, to authenticate this and um, once we have authenticated it's gonna ask us to uh, if we want to continue because it's gonna put on a bunch of add-ons uh, and additional installers and we're gonna click yes next let's go ahead and uh, get our terminal opened up so go to our applications and let's find our terminal And while we also have our terminal opened up, let's go ahead and open up command prompt while we're at it. So we're going to need stuff inside of there as well to connect the two. So now inside of our Fedora terminal, we're going to run this ifconfig and it's going to give us this inet number right here. And then if you come over to your command line and you go put in ssh, uh, your name, and then for that local host, it's going to be this inet number right there. Then go ahead and enter your password and if you get this where it says last login, and it says your name at localhost or whatever your login is uh, you are good to go if not it's most likely because of an SSH configuration problem and I'm gonna show you a couple uh, commands you, or, uh, yeah commands you can run inside of your terminal that should get it working alright so the first command go ahead and write out sudo dnf install SSHD and uh, I've already run all these commands so I'm not going to run them but go ahead and run that go ahead and run sudo dnf search 
SSH and then go ahead and run sudo dnf install open ssh dash server and run that as well and now if you come over to your uh, command line and try the exact same thing uh, the ssh into your terminal uh, it should work and uh, to exit out of here so now closed our connection and we're back inside of just our regular command line okay and now we have successfully um, given our Fedora Linux system access into our Windows environment and so we can go ahead and move on to our next step okay so now for our next step we're gonna need to get that Linux toolchain uh, folder and all that from the Clang installed into our engine and so to do that we're gonna go to our source build of the engine run the setup dot batch as administrator the generate project files uh, as administrator and then we're gonna run this UE4 uh, SLN file we're gonna build this uh, with UE4 open like I've shown y'all before when we're building our engine for source any uh, same way when you add a plugin or anything like that uh, we're gonna do that again so that we have that Linux toolchain inside of our engine and so now we should be able to go inside of our Unreal Engine project if we go over to this options for launch go to our device manager and we go to add an unlisted device we should have a platform that's Linux server. Uh, after we rebuilt our engine, this should be here. So choose Linux server. The device identifier is going to be that INET number that we used uh, to SSH into uh, from our Windows environment. So put in that. Um, I got her. remember and then give it a display name I'm just gonna call mine Linux server uh, the username from our Fedora system and then our password and then you should be able to add it alright so sweet we have successfully cross compiled on our Windows environment to allow us to upload a Linux server to Gamelift which is gonna save us a lot of money um, there's only one thing I'm going to leave at the end of this video, and that's when you're uploading to Gamelift. There's going to be an install.sh file inside of your server after you launch it on the project launcher for that uh, device that we just created, the Linux server. And uh, we're going to want to modify our, our install.sh file inside of that uh, win, uh, Linux server folder so that we're going to be able to have remote access into it from our own system. And so I'll just leave that video of what you need to do to modify that at the end.